Okay, let's talk about the MTTC elementary math test. Now, there is another MTTC, MTTC test out there. It's elementary education, and there's a math uh, subtest to that. And then there's uh, another test, another MTTC TC test that's elementary math. This one is more difficult, so it all depends on what your required to take. Of course, if you're watching this video, I assume that you're either interested in an MTTC elementary education uh, exam where there's a math component to it, or you're studying specifically for the elementary math uh, test. So welcome. Um, of course, you would know uh, that this is a, a teacher exam for the great state of Michigan. So what I'm going to do here is cover a kind of a math pop quiz, something you definitely um, should be able to handle for the elementary math. So we're going to talk about that in, in uh, a lot more in a moment. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I am a middle and high school math teacher and been creating online math courses for many, many years. So um, very involved in online learning, distance learning, uh, etc. So I have a lot of experience with that. I actually have a specific MTTC elementary math uh, prep course. So I'm going to leave the link to that course uh, in the description of this video if that's something you, you think you might want to check out. But uh, the, this particular exam, uh, elementary, you know, math, you know, it's kind of, uh, it can kind of, the title can be mis misleading, right? I mean, like elementary math, you're like, oh yeah, I could pass an elementary math test. You know, I just got to learn how to, you know, cover up, uh, a review of my decimals and fractions and times tables and how to do you know uh, division and all that kind of good stuff well yeah you're going to need to need to know that but you're actually going to need to know quite a bit more math uh, and i kind of would characterize the math that you're going to need to know for the elementary um, mttc elementary math test as like high school level mathematics and, and some high, advanced high school level mathematics. So it's quite a bit of algebra and geometry. So if you haven't seen what's on this exam, you definitely should check out and see what the standards or the, the specifications on it. It's considerable for sure. And if you're going to do well on this test, you're going to have to do some serious study on it. Again, this is the MTTC, which is this uh, Michigan. Every state is different, but um, you know, there are similarities as well, but the biggest thing with the elementary uh, teacher exams is that, uh, you know, you're going to have to know, but, you know, a lot more math than elementary level math. Okay, of course, you're going to have to know that as well. So let's take a look at this little problem here. Uh, and this would be, would cover one of the topics that you're going to need to know. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to solve it. Of course, I'm going to solve it and then we'll uh, wrap it up. So I have, um, some stuff written out here, right? So I have this. Now, I'm going to, of course, explain this in detail, but I don't want to give you too many clues here to kind of ruin the opportunity for you to, like, solve this, right? So I have this. Okay, so given this, I'd like you to find out what this is equal to, right? So this should mean something to you algebraically. So if you think you could do that, uh, I encourage you to pause the video and give it a whirl. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this now. So I kind of kept it very general because I didn't want to, uh, you know, give you too many clues. But now let's get into it. All right, so I have a function here, right? So this is a function. That's a specific function. f of x is equal to 2x minus 1. And I'm asking you to find what we call the inverse function. So this is the notation. This f of negative 1x is the notation for the inverse of a function. So they're uh, given a function, all right, so f of x, all right, some of these functions have an inverse function. Okay, we can also write it like so. Now, not every function has an inverse. This is a massive, massive area in mathematics. So really don't, this is not an appropriate video to get talk about everything you need to know about functions, but you're going to need to know a lot about functions. So just quickly, I'm just going to highlight some of the uh, discussion points that you're going to need to know about functions um, uh, to do well in an MTTC elementary math test. But you'll need to understand, hey, what's a domain of a function? What's the range of a function? Like, what is a function in the first place? Okay. Uh, graphically, how do we 
you know interpret uh, what a function is how do we find uh, the composites of two functions um, etc function operations and along with uh, this and several other special functions is another topic but along with this uh, uh, one really important topic is uh, functions and inverses okay so when does an inverse of a function exist and what is that now this is a big you know like lesson in and of itself but what we're going to do is just kind of keep it really uh, simple but I wanted to emphasize the importance of functions in the role of mathematics especially um, algebra so you're definitely going to need to know um, this topic very well amongst others all right so let's get to it so how do we find the inverse function so like uh, again I'm not going to speak about whether this this inverse exists that's another topic we're, we're gonna it does exist in this case what we're gonna do is just go ahead and find it so first thing um, and we want to do is realize that f of x this notation f of x is uh, equal to y okay so in other words if I see an f of x I can write a y when it comes to a linear functions like just like this so instead of f of x equals 2x minus 1 I'm going to think of it as a linear equation uh, y equals 2x minus 1 so let's just get our kind of um, uh, descriptions down correctly so this right here I would refer to as a linear equation some of you out there might recognize this as a graph of a line and that would be correct so this is a graph of a line or a nice linear equation y equals mx plus b this here is mathematically generally a, a equivalent to this but this is a, a linear function so I would refer to this as a function because I'm using function notation this is uh, an equation so but when we're trying to find an inverse of a function first thing you want to do is replace that f of x with the y okay so this is step one okay all right now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the x and y we're going to reverse their spots in other words wherever the, where the y is, uh, what's in the y space or y location here I'm going to uh, put um, the x there and then the y I'm going to put where the x is at because I'm just going to basically switch these guys so when I do that I get x is equal to 2y minus 1 okay so hopefully that makes sense so at this point all we need to do is solve for y okay in this new equation now that I flip-flopped the x and y and when I do that I will have the inverse so let's go ahead and do this so typically um, I like to solve with the equation on the left hand side I just I find it is easier to work with so x is equal to 2y minus 1 well I can write this this way 2y minus 1 is equal to x right so if a is equal to b well b is equal to a okay it's a reflexive property I could just uh, flip one over to the other doesn't make a difference okay so this is an, equ uh, uh, an equivalent way to write this now I only did that so I can have my y on the left hand side just easier for me to see or to work with when I'm solving this okay so how do we solve for y now before I get to tell you how to do it you should always maybe um, I encourage you to pause the video and just kind of like you know try to work ahead of me if you think you know how to do it so if you think you know how to solve for y go ahead and do so all right so how we do this how we solve for y is we're going to add one to both sides of the equation all right and how do we solve for a variable when there's multiple variables in an equation now, that's a whole nother skill so I don't want to turn this into too many lessons here go off into too many tangents so anyways when we do this we get two y is equal to x plus one now to solve for y I need to divide everything by two okay so now I'm going to get y is equal to x over 2 is the same thing as 1 half x plus 1 half okay at this point this y this this uh, uh, linear equation what we're going to do is replace this y with this symbol here the inverse notation and so we have f of negative 1 x is equal to 1 half x plus 1 half so this is our inverse function so here given this function this is the inverse function okay 
So if you got that right, that's excellent. Now there's a whole nother um, step that you want to take here because the definition of an inverse function is this, f of f of negative one, let's just use this notation, is equal to f of negative one, f is equal to x. Now what does all that mumbo jumbo mean? Basically it means this, if I plug in this function into the inverse, I'm going to it, uh, as a kind of like a composite function, I'm going to get um, x. And if I plug in the inverse into the function, I'm going to get x. Again, this is a, a big topic, but let me just sh uh, show you how we're going to do this. Let's plug in. Let's see what f to f negative 1 x is going to be equal to. Okay, we'll just do one portion of this. Uh, so I'm going to plug in all right, I'm going to plug in the inverse function. I'm going to plug it in to the original function. Okay, so the original function is 2x minus 1, right? So that was the original function. All right, so remember f of x is equal to 2x minus 1. So we're, this, what we're plugging in, let me use a different color. This would be our x. Okay, so I'm going to replace. I'm plugging in the f of negative one function and I'm going to plug it in where the x is at. Okay, that's what it means to evaluate a function. Uh, if you're a little bit lost, what I'm talking about here specifically is like composite function. So f of negative one x, the that uh, uh, inverse function is equivalent to this expression right here, one half x plus one half. So really what I'm going to do is plug in this one half x plus one half into this function, 2 to the 1 half x plus 1 half. Okay, hopefully you're not lost, you're with me. And now let's see what we get. Okay, so when I simplify this, I get 2 times 1 half, that is going to be 1x, or just x, 2 times, uh, or two, 2 times 1 half x is just going to give me 1x, and then 2 times 1 half is just going to give me 1. Now I have this negative one hanging out there, so that's minus one. And when I simplify this, I'm gonna be left with just x, right? The one x, these ones go away. So this um, uh, evaluating, putting the inverse function inside of the uh, original function, I ended up with x. Now you, you'll see when you plug in the original function into the inverse function, you'll get the same answer. So this is by definition what it means to have an inverse. There's a lot of other uh, characteristics that we want to speak about, but this is this is how we verify a function and its inverse. Um, again, a big topic of discussion that uh, you know I'm not going to be able to cover all in this video, but if you're with me so far um, on this particular problem, then kudos. That's that's excellent. Okay, but let's go ahead and um, and wrap it up. Okay, the whole point of this video was just to give you kind of give you a, a little bit of more information on the MTCC elementary math test. Again, it's a considerable amount of math, and if you're a little intimidated by what we just did here, well, this is kind of like basic high school level algebra one. There's going to be much more advanced math than this on 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 this particular exam. So use it as a gauge of what you think you, you know, kind of where you're at. Uh, it's, you know, by no means an exhaustive, you know, spot check on all the things you need to know. But hey, if you were able to do this, then that's that's a good indication that, hey, your your, your math skills are, you know, are, are pretty good. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, so two things here I'd like to uh, suggest. So the first is, if you like my teaching style, you want to check out my MTTC uh, elementary math prep course. It's super comprehensive. I'm going to leave the link again to that course in the description of this video. I've been on YouTube for uh, over 12 years. I literally have hundreds of videos that can help you out on my channel. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Um, so that's another resource you can use. Hey, if you liked the video, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some uh, feedback. Uh, you know, where are you at? Are you uh, almost you know ready to graduate are you currently uh, a teacher and you got to get this particular exam I I'll, I'll make a, a confession to you I don't know when once I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments and someone's gonna answer for me when someone needs to take the elementary education 
that particular certification and then the elementary math I'm not um, familiar I never was an elementary school teacher and certainly didn't teach in um, uh, Michigan but I know the elementary certifications are a little bit different so I don't know if when you teach uh, elementary math in Michigan that you actually have to take both certification exams again I'm sure someone would answer to me I don't believe they are this the that one exam is part of the uh, the uh, other elementary um, education overall certification but anyways I definitely know that there are those two um, separate tests and one is a little more challenging this particular one it has more math on it um, now again, if I'm uh, misspeaking, that's something you want to check out. But either way, um, uh, whether you're t it's the elementary education math or or elementary math, doesn't make a difference. You're going to have to know a lot of mathematics, way more than just the elementary level. So, but with that being said, um, you know I want to encourage you. Uh, I always leave this too when I'm speaking to teachers is that I always want to keep encouraging you, encouraging you to just don't quit on these certification exams. Many, many teachers, believe me, I support a lot of teachers in multiple states out there. Many teachers have to retake certification exams. They don't pass it the first time around. So that's completely normal. It's not something that none of us want to happen, but there are, it's not uncommon. Okay. So don't quit whatever you do. Okay. You've worked hard to get where you're at. So if math is that one thing that's holding you up, you know, hopefully, a, uh, you know, videos like this or some my course can help you out just to bridge that gap so you can get where you're going. Listen, I'm trying to help a fellow teacher, you know, uh, and we need to have the best teachers we can out there. And I'm speaking as a, uh, a teacher and a parent myself. So anyways, I wish you all the best in your education career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.